Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing finitely generated field extensions. Okay, so in this next video what we want to do is generalize what we did in the previous video to an arbitrary finite number of generators. Okay, so in the previous video we just did it for two generators. Okay, so we're now going to consider then uh, the field extension of f generated by alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n once again. And all of these elements we are now going to assume are algebraic over f. Okay, so that's going to be our starting assumption now. None of them are transcendental. Every single one of these is algebraic over f. Okay, so all of the in initial sort of assumptions that we started off with, the general assumptions that these were all elements that were in L but outside of F, all of that still holds, but now we're going to add the assumption that they're all algebraic over F as well. Okay, and we're going to try and get some uh, beautiful understanding of this, and you'll be able to most likely guess what the understanding of this is going to be, uh, but we will go through the motions anyway. Okay, so what we've shown so far is that we can decompose this into a series of simple extensions. And I'll just copy that diagram out again. So what we firstly do is we create F1, our first field extension of F, uh, which we'll call F0, okay, uh, which we produce by taking the field extension of F0 uh, generated by alpha 1, so a simple extension. Then what we do is we go up to F2, uh, which is the field extension of F1 generated by alpha 2, and then this continues on all the way down to finally we'll have Fn, uh, which is the field extension of Fn minus 1 generated by alpha n here. Okay, so there is that recursive series of simple extensions that we've decomposed uh, the building of our finitely generated field extension into. Okay, now... Now we're going to add in the additional um, piece of knowledge that we know, which is that all of these elements are algebraic over f. Okay, so that's fantastic for this one here, as always, because alpha 1 is now algebraic over f, and indeed we're taking a field extension of f uh, that is generated by alpha 1. So that means that we completely understand this. All we need to do is take polynomials uh, with coefficients in the field f0 and evaluate them at alpha 1, get a bunch of elements in the larger field capital L, collect them all together into a subset, and that will be uh, my new field extension of f, which I'm calling f1. Okay, then we'll go on to this next bit, trying to construct f2, and it's exactly analogous to what we had before. Okay, uh, we're now asking to extend f1, which is already a field extension of f, uh, by using this generator alpha2. So the big question now is, is alpha2 algebraic over f1? And of course the answer is yes. Okay, and indeed this generalizes all of these elements, alpha1, alpha2, all the way down to alpha n here, they're all going to be algebraic over the field that we're trying to use them to generate a field extension of. Okay, so if I write out more generally that fi is equal to fi minus 1, um, the field extension of that generated by alpha i, alpha i, my claim is that that's always going to be algebraic over this field that we're trying to use it to generate a field extension of. Okay, and the reason is that all of these fields, the fi minus 1s here, they are all field extensions of f. If alpha i is algebraic over f, which we know all of them are, then there is some polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field, capital F, such that when it's evaluated as alpha i, is equal to zero, that polynomial will still be in the ring of polynomials now over the field f i minus 1, which is just a field extension of f, and of course it will still, when evaluated at alpha i, give you zero. Okay, so that means that if the elements alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n are algebraic over the field f, then they're all going to be algebraic over the necessary field extensions of f that we need them to be algebraic 
over. So all of these simple extensions then that we're producing here, they are going to be simple extensions generated by an element that's algebraic over the field that we're trying to extend. So that means that we have a complete understanding of all of these individual simple extensions, and that means that we can indeed build you the entire uh, finitely generated field extension, which is very good. That's why uh, we studied this. That's uh, why this was such a useful theorem to know about. Okay, right. Uh, so now let's actually think about how you will go then from um, fi minus 1 to fi. So we now know that alpha i is indeed algebraic over uh, fi minus 1. So that means that when we actually produce fi, all you need to do is look at all of the polynomials in the ring of polynomials over the field fi minus 1 here. You need to evaluate them at alpha i, so evaluate all of them at alpha i, you'll get loads of elements in the larger field capital L, you'll get all of the elements of fi minus 1 because of all the constant polynomials here, okay, and you'll end up with a field extension of fi minus 1, and what we can conclude is that that will actually be isomorphic to uh, this ring of polynomials here, quotiented out by the principal ideal generated by the minimal polynomial for alpha i over the field fi minus 1, okay? And the reason, of course, is that all of the polynomials that are in the same additive coset of the principal ideal generated by the minimal polynomial of alpha i over fi minus 1 are going to evaluate under alpha i to give the exact same element of L, okay? Because all the elements, for instance, in this principal ideal generated by the minimal polynomial of alpha i over fi minus 1. They're just going to be all the multiples of that, and they're all going to evaluate uh, under alpha 1 to give 0. And indeed, all of the additive cosets of this, all of the elements in an additive coset of this are all going to evaluate to give the same element. So that's a hint as to why these two are isomorphic to one another, why there's a beautiful bijective correspondence between the two. But if you aren't familiar with that, do watch my video on field extensions and then the video on algebraic field extensions where we explore that. The point is that we know exactly how to build this. Okay, you can just look at the ring of polynomials um, over the field fi minus 1 and just evaluate every single one of them at alpha i and you'll then get a bunch of answers in L, collect all of those answers together, that will be your new field extension fi. Okay, and I want to stress that not all of the polynomials will give different answers. This describes which polynomials will give which answers. The, all the elements that are in an additive coset of the minimal polynomial here will give the same answer. Okay, so it's not as though every polynomial will give a different answer, provided, of course, that these are algebraic, which we know they are. Okay, so that's why we want them to be algebraic, so that the polynomials loop back around, basically, and you don't just go on and on forever with the polynomials giving different answers. Okay, you do eventually get to a point where you don't get new answers again. Okay, you get answers that you've already gone, uh, that you've already got. Okay, right, so we understand that now, okay? The, po the elements in here, fi, will be polynomials in alpha i where the coefficients are from fi minus 1. Now, of course, the elements of fi minus 1, those themselves will be polynomials in alpha i minus 1 uh, where the coefficients of those polynomials are from fi minus 2 and etc. and it goes back. So hopefully you're now starting to see that when we go up to fn here, what we will actually have here, the elements in here, will actually just be polynomials in alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, all the way up to alpha n. Okay, so I hope intuitively uh, that what you can see is happening here is to construct the um, field extension generated by alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n over f. All you need to do is consider the ring of polynomials in n indeterminate, so x1, x2, all the way up to xn, with coefficients from the field capital F. Okay, so look at all the polynomials in the, this ring of polynomials here. Okay, and then evaluate them all, where you let x1 equal alpha 1. Okay, so we're going to let this one equal alpha 1. We're going to let x2 equal alpha 2, all the way up to xn, which will let equal alpha n. 
get all of these answers here. Oh, again, all of the answers that you get when you evaluate these polynomials in this way uh, will be elements of the field capital L. Okay, get all of those answers in L, and that subset of L that you're getting here will be equal to this field extension of F that contains alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n. That is the overall message here. That's the understanding that I want you to take. The understanding of how to actually construct this thing if all of these elements, alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n, are algebraic over the field F. You can just look at all the polynomials in the uh, n variables x1, x2, all the way up to xn, where the coefficients are from the field F, evaluate them all where you let x1 equal alpha 1, x2 equal alpha 2, all the way up to xn equal alpha n, you'll get answers in the larger field capital L. It will completely contain F, this set that you build, because of the constant polynomials in here, and this will in fact be your uh, smallest possible field extension of F that contains all of these elements. Okay, I hope you can at least appreciate that everything in here evaluated at these elements does actually have to be in the uh, field generated by alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n um, over f, uh, because indeed all of these are just all of these polynomials over f where you're evaluating at alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n. They are just these elements uh, being raised to certain powers, multiplying with each other, and then multiplying with elements of the field F. Okay, so because this has to be closed under multiplication and addition, all of those elements in there must be in this. Okay, so I hope that this does seem intuitive to you. It is just an intuitive extension of what we've already been discussing. Okay, right, so one more thing to say for this video, which is that what we can conclude from this is that the degree of a finitely generated field extension in this way over the initial field capital F is going to be finite. Okay, so I'll just get another piece of paper and we'll discuss that. Okay, right, so what I want to conclude then is that the degree of my finitely generated field extension, which, for t so that I can write it quickly, I'll just denote Fn here, over F is going to be finite, okay, always. Now, why can I conclude that? Oh, uh, well, I should just say, when the elements are algebraic, okay, the, a finitely generated field extension, when the elements are algebraic, we do need the elements to be algebraic, okay, so we've ruled out any of the elements being transcendental over the initial field F. So we're now supposing that alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n are algebraic over the initial field, capital F. Okay, so how can I conclude that this is finite? Well, what I can do is use a generalization of the Tower Law. So, in the video on the Tower Law in this playlist on field theory, we showed that the degree of a field extension over a smaller field, so the degree, let's say, of L over F, okay, you can work that out by finding some intermediate field in between the two, and then it's going to be equal to the degree of the larger field, L, over the intermediate field, times the degree of the intermediate field over the smallest field, okay? We now have a whole bunch of, well, and a whole ascending chain of field extensions, which I'll just copy out here. We know that F0 is a subfield of F1, which itself is a subfield of F2, and it goes up in an ascending chain, like so, up to Fn here, so we've got this beautiful ascending chain of field extensions. Okay, so if we want to make a comment about the degree of Fn over F, and of course F is F0 here, okay, um, then we can use the intermediate fields here and the tower law. Now, of course, the tower law that we've seen so far only concerns having a single intermediate field, and we've got loads of intermediate fields. Okay, so what I just want to show you is that the tower law can be beautifully generalized. Okay, what I would like to write down here is that this is the degree of Fn over Fn minus 1, like so, times the degree of Fn minus 1 over Fn minus 2, okay, and then I'd like to continue going down all the way until we get to the degree of F1 over F0. 
Okay, so I'd like to say that the degree of this one over this one is the degree of this one over this one times the degree of this one over this one times the degree of this one over this one, etc. down to the degree of this one over this one times the degree of this one over this one. Okay, that's a generalization of the Tau law that does hold true, and it's extremely easy to see why that holds true from the Tau law that we've seen. The Tau law which we've seen just involves one intermediate field, so how can you extend it to this? Well, what you can say is, okay, let's start off by using as our only intermediate field Fm minus 1. This is an intermediate field in between F0 and Fn. So by the Tau law that we have proven in the video on the Tau law, okay, we can say that the degree of Fn over F0 is the degree of Fn over Fn minus 1 times the degree of Fn minus 1 over F0. Okay, but then we can go further now. We can apply the Tau law to this. Okay, so we can now say, okay, let's now view as a intermediate field in between fm minus 1 and f0, fm minus 2, so we can say that this is going to be the degree of fm minus 1 over fm minus 2 times the degree of fm minus 2 over f0. Okay, like so, and then you can continue on, you can say, okay, now we'll have the intermediate field in between these two, fm minus 3, and then we can say that the degree of fm minus 2 uh, over f0 is equal to fm minus 2 over the, the degree of fm minus 2 over fm minus 3 times the degree of fm minus 3 over f0, and you can continue on until you do get that it's just the degree of fm um, over fm minus 1, times the degree of fm minus 1 over fm minus 2 times the degree of fm minus 2 over fm minus 3 and you can go all the way down in this way. Okay, now, because I'm supposing that alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha n are algebraic over f, then all that we've just been discussing here about how these simple extensions here are all just um, generated by an element that's algebraic over the field that you're trying to extend, all of that works. And that means that we can now say that the degree of each one of these, okay, so the degree of each one of these simple extensions, so if, for instance, I want to comment on the degree of fi over fi minus 1 here, what's that going to be equal to? Well, it's just going to be the degree of the minimal polynomial for alpha i over fi minus 1, because we know that fi viewed as a vector space over fi minus 1 is going to have degree uh, equal to the degree of the minimal polynomial here. Okay, so the point is that it's going to be some finite value. Okay, so we can we can conclude that all of these are finite, and therefore that you're multiplying together a bunch of finite numbers, finite natural numbers, and you will therefore end up with a finite natural number. So, overall here, I've been able to conclude that the degree of a finitely generated field extension over the initial field, capital F, is going to be some finite value. We'll have a break here, and then we'll extend that theorem in the final video.